people, kind people, what's up? Lee Sanders here. This is your WWE NXT TakeOver in your house post-show pay-per-view recap review post-show dropping Sunday of June the 7th, 2020. What is going on, good people? Hey, got the poll asking you all, what did you think about tonight's NXT in your house? I want to know. We got two polls right now. One is on YouTube. You can check it out by heading on over to the YouTube's tab, youtube.com forward slash the RCWR show. Click on the communities tab and you can cash your vote over there. Also got a Twitter poll at the RCWR show. Got a poll on there as well. We'll check into that in just a little bit. Seeing what y'all had thought about the event. Gotta say, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty, pretty, pretty good way to put a nice, pretty little book in to a weekend. Way to kick off the month of June, honestly, because can we all be in agreement? The month of May was some of the most depressing. Ooh, man, 2020 has been rough, but just everything that went down in May, just can we just try to forget that May even happened, right? So it's nice that off to a a nice, happy, you know, smiling faces and everything. Hope you guys have been well and you've been making now with all the craziness that's been going on. Hopefully in your respected neck of the woods, particularly if you're here in the U.S. So they, a lot of places are going into phase one. Hopefully things are slowly but surely getting back to normal at your respected end. So look, this is not going to be a long, drawn-out pay-per-view recap. We've only had a total of about, looking in my notes here, we only had a total of about uh, six matches when it's all said and done. No pre-show matches. No pre-shows to be talking about tonight. So my goal is to be just boom, 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 so you guys can enjoy the rest of your night. As I'm interacting with you all, giving you guys my thoughts as always, about these pay-per-views. I definitely want to know what you guys had thought about the pay-per-views as well. So definitely sound off. I am streaming live on multiple platforms. Streaming on YouTube, Twitch, Mixler, Facebook. That's all the platforms. I don't think I'm forgetting any anybody else. YouTube, Twitch, Mixler, Facebook. I don't think I'm forgetting anybody else. We'll see how this goes. If you were with me on the last episode, sadly, the stream had got interrupted, and I think that was for the second or third consecutive show. Now, it turns out OBS, they did have a update. They did have an update, so I updated, and I believe we're going to be okay. Don't quote me on that. Shout out to my brother in arms, Mish, Anthony Missionary Thomas from Wrestling Soup. Uh, he told me he was going to try to uh, look behind the scenes and see if he can help me out a little bit because I told him everything that's been going on. Uh, if you guys have watched the initial live stream, you know exactly what all had went down. So we'll see how things go. If the stream gets interrupted, to you all's knowledge, let me know, and I will do my best to just try to figure it all out but anyway take over in your house loved it tonight now comparing it to previous nxt takeovers you know i usually have a the reputation of letting you guys know straight up hey you know this was pretty good you know outstanding you know one of the best it was overall a good takeover but if you were to ask me to compare it to other takeover events I, I i think there's just a couple of elements you could take away from this particular takeover that'll make you go well you know this was good because of these respected reasons but that's really it you know when you just stack it up to just the overall takeovers it's not really going to be one that uh, a lot of people are, are, are going to be, uh, what, what, what's the right word I'm, I'm, I'm looking for? It's not going to be one of those uh, type of deals where you're going to be going, oh man, you know, three, four years from now or, or something of that nature. It's not going to be that type of case at all. That I can promise you. And uh, let me just check something out real quick here. 
let me just check something out real quick here. You know, one thing that I did not do, and you guys got to forgive me, uh, it looks like I did not properly title. Hang on, maybe I did. No, I did. I did title it. I did title it. I was uh, wondering if I had titled the episode properly, and I did, but for some respected reason, you guys are seeing something titled completely different, and I'm trying to understand why you guys are seeing something titled completely different hey you all real quick guys hey you all real quick let me see what's going on here uh because i'm seeing a default title that you guys are getting right now so hang on a second which is weird which is really 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 weird but hang on a second here uh let's see here uh yeah that is very weird give me a second here guys give me a second here so if you're joining me live right now, I'm seeing for some weird reason you guys are not seeing. And I, I did my end respectfully correct. But for some reason, you guys are not seeing it. Letting you all know this is your NXT in your house takeover uh, review show. So give me give me a quick second here. Yeah, that is really, really weird. Hang Hang on a second here, guys. Let me see something here. Ah, cause that's, that's gonna, that's gonna irritate me. That's gonna irritate me otherwise. So let me see here. So let me do this. Let me do this. Give me a second here, guys. I'll just clean all this up later. What I'm doing for those of you that's joining us live right now, I'm just basically retagging. Uh, what I mainly care about is the YouTube stream. I don't really care particularly that much about the Facebook stream, but I'm still gonna go ahead and uh retag that one so just bear with me bear with me and then we'll definitely be able to talk about the pay-per-view so hang on real quick here uh let's see yeah that is really weird you guys got me why it's saying the june 3rd episode of the rcwr show you guys got me like i, I have no idea i did like i normally do and it's doing something completely different so it's weird but hang on and let's uh come up in here i want to highlight all of that all right so you guys that's watching on youtube all right so now you're going to see the correct title all right so you guys are good all right and let me go over to facebook here hang on here let me go over to facebook here and let's see facebook bam all right, and let's save that. Okay, so now you guys are now you guys are good. So now you guys are seeing the correct info. So if you don't see it, just refresh your browser and you'll see the correct title of the stream and everything. So sorry for that confusion, but yeah, we're talking NXT takeover. So getting back to my initial train of thinking, when I just look at this NXT takeover event and if I were to compare it to previous takeovers, there's only a couple of things you can take away from this takeover that made you say, well, you know, it was good for these reasons. But as far as don't get it, don't get me wrong. As far as the execution, the blueprint, the, the most simplistic blueprint that Triple H and crew have when they go into these NXT takeovers is to create from top to bottom one of the best cards that's humanly possible. I felt that they did execute it with the talents that they had available, but you know, there's always that old saying when you've been watching the NXT takeovers, usually, man, okay, well, how can they top this? And normally they've been on one hell of a hot streak in topping their takeovers or being in a position where they can have a takeover equal to that of the previous takeover this is a takeover i would honestly say that it it was okay if i were to just go from a rating of one to ten one being absolute shits ten being awesome sauce i would probably give this a modest seven and if you've been checking out the shows for a long period of time uh, the podcast that is you guys know that i'm pretty consistent in how i review the pay-per-views particularly the takeover so for me and i have to rely on you all i i think this is probably in in all my years of covering nxt takeovers this is probably the very first time that i'm saying 
hey, this takeover, yeah, it, it's a seven. You know, now sevens, yeah, that's that's not bad. It, you know, definitely isn't extremely awesome, but you know, there's nothing wrong with a seven. Is the whole point that I'm making. All right, so we're just kind of going in random order here. Uh, you know, we just saw the women's match that wrapped up, uh, which had featured Charlotte Flair taking on Io Shirai, Rhea Ripley, as she was defending her NXT Women's Championship. And folks, we have a new NXT Women's Champion, and her name is Io Shirai. Uh, closing moments uh, of this matchup, uh, we basically saw Charlotte Flair. She was looking for the figure eight, and she successfully was able to apply it to Rhea Ripley. Had her flat out in the middle of the ring, was putting the torque uh, on the submission hold and, and everything. And whether or not Rhea Ripley was maybe getting ready to tap out, we will never really know because... While Charlotte Flair has Rhea locked into this position in the middle of the ring, Rhea Ripley decides she's going to hop up on the top turnbuckle. She goes for a high-risk maneuver. Now, it's funny because I was thinking maybe the way she was going to be doing this, I, I thought, okay, well, if she's going for the high-risk maneuver, she's going to fucking spike the shit out of Charlotte's stomach and, you know, Oh, that's going to pretty much take her out of the equation for a hot minute. And then she can either try to go for the cover on Charlotte. And if she's lucky, she gets the three count that way or puts the damage on Charlotte and then hurries up, goes over to Rhea Ripley, goes for the one, two, three. And that's not what happened at all. And, and for me, that sequence, I'll have to rely on you guys that had saw that final sequence as i was getting ready to just make sure the stream was set up and ready to go but it was so weird because io shirai goes up to that top turnbuckle does that high risk maneuver and everything and as i mentioned i, I thought charlotte was going to be feeling the, the full effect of that but she didn't. It, it was actually Rhea Ripley that had felt the effects of it. And, and somehow Charlotte just no, no longer in the equation to the point. Heel Shirai goes in there, goes for the cover on Ripley, one, two, three. And we got ourselves a new NXT Women's Champion. I don't know about you guys. I, I kind of honestly did not like the way that particular there's just a finish the match overall was pretty damn good but i didn't exactly like the finish to that now if i'm misinterpreting that finish let me know let me know but basically yeah because i took i didn't really have to take that many notes uh when it's all said and done but closing moments of that one she goes up to the top top rope hits a moonsault basically that landed fully on Rhea Ripley covers Ripley now some of you guys maybe say okay so what exactly was going on with Charlotte during all of this well Charlotte still was tangled up with Ripley so you, you gotta watch it yourself but you're looking at it and you're kind of going no nah, surely Charlotte should have been able to do a little something something I, I would agree i would agree charlotte should have been able to do something the way it was booked but look one thing one thing and there's no denying it charlotte was not pinned so charlotte can easily come out on the very next episode of nxt and storyline wise charlotte can basically tell eo shirai hey in order to beat a man, woo, you got to beat the man. She can easily come out there <clears throat> and say that to Io Shirai. And the two of them can continue on, uh, so to speak. I mean, for sure, you got something there. I, and I think it makes all the sense in the world, story progression-wise, that you go there next. It makes all the sense in the world. So, but yeah, just, just a weird finish to the match. I, I, I personally felt I kind of understood, but I, I, I didn't quite at the same time. When I say I, I understood, what I'm saying particularly is 
I understood what the bookers were trying to go for in order to have Io Shirai go over as the new NXT Women's Champion. That I understood completely. It was more so the execution. Uh, there was a little bit of miscommunication here and there in this match. You know, there were some spots that were, okay, well, what's going on here? One thing that I think about during this match, at one point, Charlotte and EO were going at it. It was much earlier in the match. EO comes off of the ropes, and I I'm not sure if she was trying to go under Charlotte or, or, or what, but there was some type of a miscue. Charlotte, being the pro she is, she quickly was able to improvise. And there's a little bit of, I won't even say it was sloppy, it was just more so miscues. Just a couple. I, I would say about three at most. And it's not a case where when I'm looking at these miscues, please don't take it as me nitpicking in any type of way. I'm just watching it in real time and instantly just, ah, oh, okay, that's interesting. What's going on there? That's just how it's basically coming to me when it's all said and done. But Io Shirai, your new NXT Women's Champion, long time coming. Long time coming. Very happy for Io Shirai. Io Shirai has been involved with the WWE since, what, 2017? When basically everything began with her participating in the Mae Young Classics and things just pretty much catapulted from there for her respected career and everything. The 30-year-old Io Shirai, you know, this is the first major championship that she's been able to taste uh, in the WWE. Now, let's not also forget she was uh, NXT year-end award winner going back to 2018. But other than that, since she's been down there in NXT working through the WWE, you know, no other titles have come her way. So this is a really, really cool kick-ass moment right now. And, and can we just kind of take this a step further? If you want to just really open up the books and just home in on WWE for a little bit, and really, and this really blows my mind right now, and I'm most curious to see, and most importantly hear, how many of my colleagues definitely are sharing these same sentiments with me with regards to this point I'm getting ready to make, which is this. So let me see if I have this correct. So when we go over to WWE Raw, we have Asuka, who is the Raw Women's Champion. We then go to NXT, we're now, uh, shout out to Allie. Allie uh, just gave us a follow there. Appreciate that. So we got Asuka as the Raw Women's Champion. We now go to NXT where we have Io Shirai as the NXT Women's Champion. You go over to AEW and we've got Cheetah as the new AEW Women's Champion. There's a very interesting trend that is going on here, which is... You know, we, we didn't see this in previous years with these American-based wrestling promotions that just so happens to appreciate fans from all around the world and broadcast all around the world, but are homegrown American-based. But, you know, here we have in 2020 this big old, this big old injection of Japanese wrestling. And I got to tell you, I'm not complaining about it whatsoever. On the contrary, I love this. I love this. It's really awesome in 2020 to see all of this great diversity, uh, especially from a wrestling cultural uh, standpoint. I love it. I love it on so many levels. And I'm sure that the hardcore fans of the 30-year-old Io Shirai are definitely are in euphoria for this woman right now. Because when you just look back on all the promotions that she's wrestled for over the years jwp uh pro wrestling wave tokyo sports stardom uh you know we just be going on and on and on and on and on and it has just been money money you know, you know titles left and right all the other promotions that she's been able to obtain and you know comes to wwe and you know nothing quite yet you know long time coming so it, it's been a nice slow build and I just want to make this point as well. I want to make this point as well. 
I know we had a lot of people a couple of months ago, and I got to be very consistent here because if you notice one thing that I've been pledging more and more here on the show in 2020 is consistency. Even if a case occurs where I disagree uh, with, you know, some thoughts that maybe I had in, in previous weeks or previous months, I, I try to be consistent and one, acknowledge and explain my change of thought and everything. But I got to be consistent from this point, which is, you know, for me, I remember a couple of months ago when Charlotte won the title at WrestleMania, when she defeated Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania for the NXT women's title. I was of a very select few that came on the WrestleMania show. And you guys remember, I, I say, you know what? I was a little bit perplexed at first, but then I looked at the bigger picture and the bigger picture was this is a smart move because this basically puts Charlotte in a position where she can put even more of a spotlight on the women's roster of NXT, not for nothing, but us wrestling hardcore faithfuls. We may have been watching NXT long before it moved to the USA network, but now WWE through USA Network has this has this broader reach for the NXT brand. And so you've got many new eyes on the product versus us hardcore fans that have been watching from pretty much day one. And while everybody else was saying, oh, you know, they're they're burying, uh, you know, they're going to have Charlotte bury, you know, the women's roster. Blah, 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 blah. I said, nah. She's going to be there. Her her role is to help elevate the entire roster and ultimately put over that person that okay, you know, this this is it right here. This this is the this is the go-to person. This is the person that Charlotte is ultimately going to pass the torch on to and, and really help elevate, take them to that next level and everything and as we saw tonight Io Shirai was dubbed the anointed one here. She was dubbed the anointed one here. I know a lot of people are probably, nah, man, this should be Rhea Ripley. Everything that Rhea Ripley has been doing, you know, it, it, it should be her right now. And you could definitely make a, a really good argument for Rhea Ripley. You could definitely make a good argument. But you can even make a stronger argument for Io Shirai considering Hey, not for nothing, but Rhea Ripley, you were doing your thing over in NXT UK before you came over to just NXT. And then look at that move as well. That also, you know, let's be consistent. That also, in its own respected way, Rhea coming from NXT UK to just NXT, that helped in its own way in enhancing the women's roster uh, even more, the women's division for NXT even more overall. So... To be in this position now where we got Io Shirai, I welcome it, of course, as I just mentioned. And don't be too surprised if next coming weeks it's going to be Charlotte Flair making the argument, you know, you, you pinned Rhea Ripley. In order to beat a man, you got to beat the man. And you didn't beat me, so I, I can definitely see it happening. But that was a great match. Uh, between those three girls, I would say scale of one to five, uh, as far as the star rating goes, uh, I, I would give that match, I'd give that match a, a three and a half out of five. I think that's more than modest, a three and a half out of five for sure. So this is the 28th annual in your house NXT version. But the last time we had got a in your house you got to rewind it back the last one was actually going back to 1999 believe it or not 1999 party like a party tell it's 1999 and it was the saint valentine's day massacre edition of in your house february 14th of 1999 in memphis T tennessee if you guys maybe want to go down memory lane and watch this, assuming you have the full version of the WWE Network. You guys are more than welcome to do so. I'm just going to read to you guys the matches. I'm not going to give you the results. But you had a dark match that consisted of Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor 
taking on the Hardy Boys. Viscera with Median with Median took on Tess, who was with the Big Boss Man. Billy Gunn with Triple H and X Pac took on Tiger Ali Singh in a no contest, uh, or sorry, in a singles match. Goldust took on Blue Dust. I'll let you figure that one out. Big Boss Man took on Median. Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart took on D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry. Val Venus, or as we used to call them back in the day, Pal. Pale Penis with Ryan Shamrock took on Ken Shamrock. This was for the WWF Intercontinental Championship. By the way, the Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart taking on D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry. That was a tag match for the WWF Tag Team Titles. Bob Holly took on Al Snow for the Hardcore Championship match. It was a vacant title at that point. The Corporations, China and Kane... Uh, shout out to uh, M4T, who just gave us a uh, follow, it looks like. Yeah, he just subscribed. Appreciate that. Corporations China and Kane took on Degeneration X's Triple H and X-Pac tag team match. Mankind took on The Rock last man standing match for the WWF Championship. Stone Cold Steve Austin took on Mr. Vince McMahon steel cage match to determine the number one contender to the WWF Championship at WrestleMania 15. You heard me right. Stone Cold taking on Vince McMahon. Steel Cage match to determine the number one contender to the WWF Championship at WrestleMania 15. So you want to walk down memory lane after you get done checking out this edition. Go scoop that up on the WWE Network when you can. So... 1999. So it has been over 20 years since we've gotten a in your house. And I, I tell you, I enjoyed the nostalgia that we had got tonight. Uh, seeing the uh, spot there for the WWE good humor ice cream sandwiches, which I, I, I got to tell you, I, I didn't make that much of a fuss about it, but I did try it some months ago. And for me personally, I thought it was the nastiest ice cream sandwiches I've ever tasted. Now, some of you guys may say, Lee, what the fuck? I, it was extremely too sweet for me. It was extremely too sweet. I, I, I just, I did not, I did not like the taste of it. I did not like the taste of it, but to each its own. I'm not judging, to each its own, but too sweet for me. Uh, too sweet! Uh, but anyway... Love seeing the nostalgia that they had going on there. Todd Pentagel, they dusted him off. It was nice to see them collaborate with him uh, once again. Uh, he had his nice moments. I, I love the spot there where uh, he he was saying, so the 900 numbers have been totally uh, uh, eradicated. Like we're, we're not doing 900 numbers anymore. You know, we're doing the web and then the whole AOL spot and you go over to Road Dog. Shawn Michaels and Triple H beating the hell out of a fucking computer. And, and the one thing that's been very consistent over the years, no matter what decade, you know, anytime we get a skit involving Shawn Michaels in a computer, we say seeing see Shawn Michaels with the one index fingers on the computer. We saw a very young Shawn Michaels doing it way back in the day. You know, towards the tail end of his career, and now that he's a coach, like different versions of Shawn Michaels we've seen over the years. So you can't help but wonder. Okay, so what's going on? What is typing? Is he is he really? <laughs> you can't help but wonder that. But a uh, lot of nostalgia factor that they had going into this. The band that they had open up NXT. Got to tell you, I didn't particularly care for the band. Uh, I know that. Hey, that's what makes this world so beautiful and so unique in its own way is that we all have our own unique tastes but that particular music i did not care about i did not care about i actually had put it on mute i stayed with it for about 90 seconds put it on mute didn't care anything for it it is what it is but yeah I was surprised that they did not do a pre-show matchup uh during this because apparently they did do a pre-show i thought it was going to be an hour long the pre-show actually began at 6 30 i did not watch any of that but from what i understand there was no matches that had aired 
and it was only 30 minutes, so not not bad. First matchup that we got of the night here for the official card, uh, we got to see us the all women's matchup: Mia Yim, Shotzi Blackheart, and Tegan Knox. They defeated Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. Your six-woman tag team matchup. Got to tell you, that was a very, very short match. Uh, the match barely, barely took down my notes. I didn't really have to take down that many tonight. But this match barely crept up on 10 minutes. And it, it just left me scratching my head going, okay, did something happen? Did somebody get injured or something because to kind of follow up on Gino's point uh, and I do see what everybody is saying in the chat here you know it, it went by pretty quick this pay-per-view but when you really stop and think about it, and you've been you know watching the NXT takeovers I mean yeah they have done some where it's oh man they went about two hours and you know 45 minutes or or what have you but now, normally takeovers are, are are pretty short and to the point. It's not long and, and, and drawn out uh, like that. But this match, it it was weird watching this. Barely 10 minutes. You, you got all of these great talents, all those girls that I just named. And it's a six-woman tag match. I was expecting these girls to go at least about 15 to 20 minutes. And it didn't even go down that way. Uh, again, barely 10 minutes uh, of a match that this was. Uh, you know, it was okay. I got to tell you, there was one point during the match here where Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai, they had an early lockup. And the execution of that was a, a bit sloppy in some areas. Uh, it, it just, when I think back of this match... When I go back and I think about this match in particular, shout out to uh, Le Lezima, Lezima, who just uh, looks like they just gave us a uh, subscribe there. But when I look back on this six women's tag match, to me it felt more like a match. I'm gonna get this in. I'm gonna get this in. I, I, what you gonna get in? Okay, so you're gonna get all the. Okay, what you go? It felt as though people in, in this one were just jockeying for making sure they got all their shit in. You know, a little bit of spot fest here and there, but get your shit in while you can. That that's literally how this felt to me, and I I really did not like that. The other thing that I did not like. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I love all these girls, too. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. I, I just wish that whoever was in charge of booking this match, I, I really wish that as they were listening to everything that was going to be laid out, I, I really wish, okay, well, let's take that out and, and let's take this out because blah, 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 blah. Follow up later on during this. Shotzi, she does a spot through the ropes. I didn't particularly mind that spot whatsoever because the way she did it, and if you remember, again, being consistent, I was on this show a couple of weeks ago, and I said to you guys, I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of seeing people go over the ropes, through the ropes, and people are just, yeah, yeah, come on, bro, we'll, we'll, we'll catch you, man. Just Come on, we got you. Whoa. And the way Shotzi did it through the ropes, I'm going, Okay, she took some people off guard. Okay, no problem. All right, all right, cool. Nice little spot. But then Candice LeRae does something, and now you got people just good. Come on! And then you got Tegan Knox. Tegan Knox follows up and does something. And then it's like, ah, oh, come fucking on already. That that was just too much overkill. So now you kind of get what I'm talking about when I'm saying, okay, there was it just got to a point where it's like spot, spot. I got to get my shit in. All, all that crap. Yeah, weird. Uh, and then immediately, even after Tegan Knox had did that, that that one spot there, then eventually, like, not even that long. It wasn't even three minutes. Shotzi looking for a uh, dive off the top rope inside the ring. I forgot who was her opponent at that point, who, who she was trying to do the move to or whatever. But there's a lot of flying shit over the ropes. And I didn't particularly care for that. Did not particularly care for that. This match was over in the blink of an eye. 
when it was all said and done. Match was over in the blink of an eye. Uh, Tegan Knox pinning Dakota Kai. And I, I got to tell you, when you've been watching the NXT product for a significant period of time, you know, for at least four or five months, maybe four to five months, you know that Dakota Kai, Tegan Knox, they were engulfed in a, a little bit of a, a bitter back and forth, you know, little feud or whatever. And this match was just over like that. You know, Knox levels Dakota Kai with a choke slam, follows it up with the shiniest wizard three count. That's pretty much it. You know, just out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. I, I really would have loved it if it would have been a case where Dakota Kai was kind of playing a little bit hard to get with Tegan Knox, so to speak. I mean, if I could really look at this match and, and really find my biggest bright spot from this whole match, I did like the booking of Raquel Gonzalez. They booked her like a fucking beast. I, I, I did appreciate that. Yeah, I'm looking at her, and now that she's starting to get nice and toned up, you know, she's putting a little bit more muscle mass on herself and everything. You know, she is really looking like she can be a force to reckon with. I don't know which commentator had said it during that match, but, you know, somebody had said she's kind of looking, I believe the term was ninth wonder of the world-ish. It was how she was kind of looking. I could definitely see her be a, a, a cool-ass force to reckon with in, in due time. In, in due time. I did like how they booked her. Um, other than that, just too much of a spot fest for me going on in that matchup. I, I know other people may probably look at this matchup and they may go, nah, you know, that actually was a pretty damn good match. Like, you know, yeah, we'll have to agree to disagree. All right, next up. Well, we already got two matches down. Let's keep going. We only got four more to talk about. Finn Balor defeating Damian Priest. A little bit over 13 minutes. <sighs> Good match. Let me tell you something. When it comes to Finn Balor, anything involving Finn Balor, for me personally, I already know what I can expect when I'm looking at a match involving Finn Balor. I know Finn Balor, night in, night out. He's going to be that workhorse. He's going to go out there, and he's going to put it all on the line. He's a steady hand. That's the point that I'm making. I ain't got to worry about Finn Balor. So for me... All that, put that to the side. For me, this was not about Finn Balor. For me, this was about evaluating further Damian Priest and seeing how he would be able to hang with a guy like Finn Balor that at one point, he had this time in the sun and, and he was the fucking shits. He was the shits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, Gino. Thank you for that super chat. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, I'm almost tempted to move the logo around a little bit so you guys can see the uh, graphics a little bit more there. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll do that. If you guys want me to change the uh, logo, resize the logo a little bit, let me know. No, otherwise, if you guys are good with the logo, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it alone. But um, for me, with regards to this matchup, I got to be honest, I felt the wrong guy won. I felt the wrong guy won. Now, on the one hand, let me say this, and let me stress this. Damian Priest showed me tonight he could hang. He showed me he could hang big time. And definitely, his career, very bright. As far as impact player, main roster, that definitely, what he showed me tonight solidified he's moving in the right direction. So I'm very, very impressed with how he handled himself tonight. And uh, one more time, Gino, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. $20 super chat. Appreciate that. Anybody else that wants to do super chats as well, you guys are more than welcome to do so. Uh, once again, we had did an encore a couple of nights ago of our show. And two, actually, two shows we did encores of because we had tech issues. And uh, some of you guys had did super chats. I appreciate that. Thank you guys uh, tremendously. I think Ghost was one of the last ones that had did a super chat, if I remember it right. So appreciate that. But Damien definitely has a bright career ahead of him. You know, tonight, though, I, I felt 
Damian Priest should have gone over. Whether it was hook or by crook, he should have gone over. Uh, look, I appreciate, I respect the fact that Finn Balor is back in NXT and everything. And yeah, he would so, he, he fits that mold right now. That's where he needs to be. And under circumstances, you know, main event just, it's silly what's going on when he was on the main roster. They just, you know, it, it got to a point where the demon just stopped surfacing when it was all said and done, when he was on the main roster and everything. You know, did he get booked kind of stupidly on the main roster? Yes, he did. So as much as I'm happy to see him back in NXT and everything, you know, my whole thing is, I mean, look, Finn Balor is not an old man by any means, you know, but he is 38. He's going to be 39 next month. So for me, I mean, he, he's still relatively a, a, a young man. There, there's no doubt about that. But why not pay yes, it yes, forward? Yes. Why not pay it forward? Uh, shout out to uh, M4T. M4T just uh, did a super chat for $10. M4T, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Uh, but that's just me. I mean, if I could be totally candid with you guys for a second again the word tonight consistency consistent i pitched the idea months ago that finn balor should have gone to smackdown and as far as trying to build somebody up and really make them you know be a, a cool ass breakout star and everything i felt that balor should have gone to smackdown and I went on record. I said, Finn Balor to Raw, you know, that's got a nice feel to it and everything. But he, my concern was back then when he initially got drafted and everything, my main concern was, okay, yeah, he's starting off hot right now. But where is he going to be three months from now? Where is he going to be six months from now? That's the main story. You know, it's great right now. But what about further down the line? We're talking about a three-hour program. It's very easy for somebody to get lost in the shuffle. So what's going to happen? And as we all know, the unfortunate injury had happened. You know, we thought for sure maybe he was going to be able to come back, reclaim his, reclaim his place, but it didn't pan out that way. And from that moment on, when I saw how things were after he came back from his injury, my whole argument was, well, shit, if we're not going to take him back to the promised land and see, you know, what might have been, what he could have done as a champion, okay, we'll take him off Raw put him on SmackDown. Let him have the matches with AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, and insert whatever that's on SmackDown. And for whatever respected reasons, things did not pan out the way that I thought it was going to pan out for him, at least going over to the SmackDown side of things and proving that, hey, you misinterpreted my value, but look at what I was able to do here with the blue brand. And you definitely need to give me a shot now on the red brand. It is what it is. Shout out to uh, Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice just gave us a uh, follow as well. I see we're picking up some uh, followers tonight. That's good. So that's how that's how I feel. You know, we may differ on that one, but that's just how I feel. So particularly looking at this match, you know, looking at Damian Priest and look and look not for nothing, but Damian Priest, aka Punishment Martinez, yeah. You know, it's not like he's 20 something years old and, and I don't want people to misinterpret what I'm, what I'm saying about him and everything. I'm not, cause I know he's a, about relatively, he's about relatively the close to the same age as Balor. If I'm not mistaken, if they're not, um, if they're not equal, they should be matter of fact, I'm looking at his age right now. Yeah. They're the same age. They're the same age. Punishment Martinez just turned 38 back in February. So make no mistake about it. You know, this isn't a case where it's, you know, you know, young guy. But if you're asking me straight up, this Damian Priest guy, he's still a. A unproven. A unproven entity here in the realm of the WWE universe, but everything that has been put before him so far comes off very promising 
maybe you know some more investment should be made in this guy and really elevate him as opposed to opportunities after opportunities given to somebody like a Finn Bauer. That that's just where I'm coming from. So worst case scenario, I'm hoping that Priest Balor continue their feud. You know, maybe this is gonna be a trilogy. I'm I'm hoping that's maybe what's gonna be going down. Um, you know, kind of have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh closing moments of this matchup, and this is where things kind of you know, you, you would hope that maybe, but the fact that they had Balor cleanly defeat Damian Priest in the middle of the ring, well, how exactly silly booking, you could say, but Finn Balor basically going up to the top rope, connecting with the Coupe de Gras. Three count that way. Good matchup, though. I got to give that one. I think I gave the women's match a, a three. I think I said a three and a half. No, I gave the NXT women's match a three and a half out of five. The opener with the six woman tag match, I, I would just give that a solid three out of five. Uh, this Finn Balor Damian Priest match, I'll give that one a four out of five. Thoroughly enjoyed that one. Very good matchup. Thoroughly enjoyed that one. Keith Lee successfully retaining his NXT. North American Championship against Johnny Gargano. Good match. Good match. Uh, I will definitely give that one about four stars. I'll definitely give that one four stars out of five. They went about a little bit over 20 minutes. Good psychology that they told uh, in this one. Uh, remember, Keith Lee's arm was a little banged up a little bit, you know, from previously you know leading up into this matchup so Gargano was homing in on that pretty much early on and then once he found that oh yeah it's working I'm, I'm torquing it just right yeah I love the psychology that they they had in there because you're looking at a big ass dude like Keith Lee and you're looking at this little scrawny guy in Johnny Gargano wondering okay so how is this exactly gonna go over how, how exactly uh, you know and sure enough they told the right story. Shout out to Keith Lee, by the way. Um, I like the statement that WWE had put out with regards to Black Lives Matter and everything. And then basically backing up their superstars. And, you know, uh, I, I like that. Very, very, very solid shit. I mean, now we're fucking seeing candy candy companies and, and your favorite snacks. Now everybody's coming out. And I, I kind of preluded to this uh, last week or the week before. And, and sad but true now now we got snack companies coming out and you know i'm just waiting for the statement from the people that make uh now uh now and laters uh now laters uh basically saying you know now laters has always been about the black people and <laughs> yeah but shout out to keith lee keith lee was actually pushing black lives matter tights uh it was on the back of his trunks and uh that was pretty badass i, I love that I, j I just saw that and i, I just said keith lee it's like, love you, man. It's like, I see you. I see you. Way, way to represent. You know, hold it down and everything. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, was good shit. It was damn good shit. Uh, good matchup, though. Good matchup between these two. If I had any bit of a little bone to pick on in this matchup, I would have to say, <sighs> closing moments, Candice LeRae came out. She thought she was going to be able to cause a little bit of a distraction on Keith Lee. Mia Yim, in storyline, was prepared for this. She actually came right on cue as soon as Candice LeRae was out there. And it made all the sense in the world because you're like, well, wait a minute here. Wait a minute here. You know, that, that team of Mia Yim and them in that six-woman tag match, they were victorious and they had a pretty short match. It wasn't like all of them, you know, were beaten to death like it was a fucking slaughterhouse or some shit so they're probably chilling in the back somewhere yeah me and him should be able to come out hold it down for a man and everything make sure no weird shenanigans goes down and sure enough me and him comes out right on cue beats the shit out of candace loray and everything and while she's handling her business with candace keith lee gets in on uh, gargano they take it up to the side uh apron referee is watching what's going on with the women oh, okay we, we see what's about to happen here gargano goes into his trunks 
pulls out some type of a metal foreign object. Tom Phillips is saying it was a key of some type. Okay, we'll, we'll run with that. Stabs Keith Lee in the eye, in the right eye with that. And then is on the offense for a little bit, you know, for that next little bit. It's kicking him in the head a couple of times. It does a series of fucking kicks to the head. But it was only getting him a two count each time he tried to go for the cover. And then finally, he, uh, you know, tells Keith Lee to you know, come to his feet or whatever. And Keith Lee is struggling to come to his feet. He's down on all fours. Gargano puts his boot on Keith Lee's uh, left hand. And he's just crushing the hell out of the fingers. And you're like, okay, so, you know, where are we going with this? You know, where exactly are we going with this? Uh, you know, for me, I really just wish Gargano would have just kept smacking the shit out of Keith Lee. I mean, just just slap the shit. I just wish he would have just kept slapping the shit out of him. Work particularly on that right eye some more. I wish he also could have done that. Uh, that would have been good if if we could have done that psychology. This is a... This is a case right here where they should have pulled the page from Rocky 2. And anybody that's seen the Rocky movies knows exactly the scene I'm talking about where Rocky wants to do the fight with Apollo Creed. He wants to do the rematch and he goes sees Mick and Mick tells him, hey, I'm really concerned about you from that last fight. Apollo did a serious number on you. I really don't think we should be doing it again. And Rocky is telling him, no, 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 you know, I, I, I'm ready. I, I can take him. You know, I'm good to go. And Mickey basically gives him the eye test and he's telling him, you know, fo follow me, you know. And we learn that that fight did severe damage to Rocky's right eye. So I was kind of hoping that Gargano in those closing moments would just irritate the beast so much in Keith Lee that when Keith Lee, Keith Lee would come to his feet, the psychology would then be just smacking him, you know, in the face, particularly on that right side, you know, punching him in that right eye. And, but that's not what happened. It was, it was so weird because it's okay. You, you've already damaged the left side of his body. Yeah. You know, but he still has that upper strength. So why not go for the next best thing psychology wise? And why not really just home in for that eye? Since you did the damage that you did, keep homing in on it even more, be more aggressive towards that. And, you know, that's basically not what we saw. Uh, Gargano, I don't know what the fuck he was trying to look for, but, uh, you know, Keith Lee basically catches him as he uh, tried to look for, I think he tried to kick him in the head again. I'm not really sure, but Keith Lee counters this time, counters it into a big old spirit bomb or or the or the uh big bang catastrophe is, is what he's calling it three count one two three keith lee finally remembering oh yeah something had happened to my right eye let me sell that i had a problem with that whole sequence especially involving the whole right eye it, it could have been executed better but it is what it is if you guys are enjoying the post show so far please do me a huge favor uh particularly for those of you that's watching via uh youtube hit that like button baby hit the like button see when you hit that like button you letting everybody else know this shit was good and the youtube algorithm gods they go out of their way to say hey 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 this was actually really really good we recommend you check it out and subscribe you can always do that. Hit the subscribe button as well. So next up, let's go to our next match here. Uh, next up, we are talking, I, I think at this point, I, I think the next match is the parking lot brawl, if, if I'm not mistaken here. Let me look at the uh, let me look at the next match here. I think it is. Uh, where are we? Yeah, yeah. We got two more matches because we already talked about the women's championship match. We got two more matches. And then we'll take a look at that poll for you guys. Adam Cole, baby! Taking on Velveteen Dream. By the way, today is the birthday of the purple one, Prince. Prince, wherever you are, man, love you. Love you tremendously. Still miss you. Still miss you. How, how we could use 
your voice right now. And uh, not just your music. Your music is greatly appreciated, but we could definitely uh, use you right now during these times. That's 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 all I'm gonna say, and I'm I'm gonna leave it at that. But ha happy birthday to the purple one. Adam Cole taking on Velveteen Dream, defeating Velveteen Dream. Last chance backlot brawl for the NXT championship. As a result of Dream losing this match, he can no longer challenge for the NXT championship while Adam Cole is still champion. Let me take a quick swig of this. Good match. This was such good shit. And I don't mean that sarcastic, sarcastically. This was actually a damn good match. I was very pleased with these men. Uh, I was quite pleased with the way this match was filmed. I mean, this this was this was basically how do you follow up the Boneyard match? Well, quite simple. Your last chance backlot brawl. And you know, I'm watching this, and you know, it, it had a very it had that. That Boneyard match cinematic effect to it, but, you know, it was, it was interesting how they laid it out because basically you had the referee who said, hey, I'm here per William Regal in storyline. So, so stay with me here. I'm here per William Regal. The only thing I am here to count is the pinfall or the submission, and it needs to happen in the ring. You could do anything else you want. Outside the ring, in the ring, well, whatever. Nothing matters. The only thing that does matter, which is why I'm here, I got to count the pinfall or the submission. Other than that, have at it. And you're like, okay, all right, cool. And, and, and so this was a, a, a brawl of a, of a match, I would say. And I, I liked how they did this. Now, let me tell you something. You're going to be able to weed out the bullshit people real quick. And I was already seeing it online. Not even five minutes into this match. <laughs> what AEW did with this stadium stampede was, was three times better than, than this shit. Uh, this is garbage. <laughs> all, all this other... Look, anybody that... Is gonna, you know, I saw other comments. Uh, uh, that that backlot brawl was stupid as fuck. That was the stupidest gimmicky match I've ever seen in my life. And it's like, stadium stampede, anybody? Uh, boneyard match, anybody? Like, you know, if, you, if you're gonna act one way, be consistent. That's the word for tonight, people. Consistent or consistency. You know, if you're gonna act one way, you, know, you can't ignore what's going on over here. You know, it's basically the same damn thing. It's the same fucking flavor. It might be in a different bag. It might be in a different box. Uh, it might have different labeling. It, it might read something in Spanish or Japanese. But the contents are no different than what you just had over here. So if you're going to act one way, be consistent with everything else that comes your way. No matter how, how it's dressed up. Is my whole point. Look, this was good. This was good. Under the circumstances, following the storyline, these two guys, they really can't stand each other. They hate each other's guts. It made sense that they did this the way that they did this. I appreciate WWE actually trying to, you know, give you elements of that there was really no wrestling in this. This was just pretty much brawling. It was no different than watching a, a street fight, basically. Um, yeah, I felt like I was watching something from an episode of Sons of Anarchy or, or, or something out of a scene from The Fast and the Furious or whatever. By the way, Velveteen Dream pushing the Negan attire. I fucking love that. I had to hit up my man Julian from the wrestling court because he is such a big... Uh, Walking Dead fan, I said, Jules, I, I said, are you watching this? I'm like, dude, I had to do a double take. I thought that was you that came out of that yellow Corvette there, man. Looking like Negan and shit. And like, and, uh, that's actually, I, I enjoy seeing that entrance so much. That's actually going to be the thumbnail for the webcast of the show. I I, I love just seeing the Teen Dream come out, you know, with the bat and everything. That That was badass. Uh, you also had a cool last little spot for Uber. These guys are beating the shit out of each other. And at one point, 
uh, Uber driver comes up. <laughs> Uber driver. Did anybody uh, order an Uber? Like, <laughs> like what? And they're just looking at each other like, what the fuck are you? And they just continue to beat the shit out of each other. Uh, you know, hey, Uber, holler at WWE. I mean, seriously, you know, they, I know they want some advertising money. That, that's a hell of a good way to get some of that advertising money. Um, I can just picture that shit right now. I mean, can you just imagine Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, or I can just picture it now. When I'm barely wrestling and I'm bored and I need something to do, I like getting in an Uber and I like driving around. And yeah, I, I could just... <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine some stupid ass shit like that or you know or I could just picture Braun Strowman when I'm done putting these hands on people in the ring nothing pleases me more than when I'm able to get into a ride and go off to my hotel so I can sleep before I sleep though I usually like to get my eat on and my drink on of course, I can't do all that alone. That's why I like the good folks at Uber, because they sure as hell know how to help me out. Uber, when you need them. And like, I, I can just imagine WWE. You know it's coming down the road, man. But no, epic entrance there by Velveteen Dream. All of their entrances were badass. I, I loved it. Adam Cole with his fucking monster truck and everything. That was badass. But Velveteen Dream in the yellow Corvette. Negan outfit. I'm going. All right, he won. He won that. That that was awesome. No, these guys had a had a really great match. You know, just as it sounds, a back lot brawl. They did that exactly. You know, it it had so many so many of my favorite movies mixed in there. Now, I'm not a fan of the Fast and the Furious. I, I'm just not. Teach you something. I, I've seen little bits and pieces. I just. Now, the shit with The Rock, I, I did watch that for The Rock. I did watch that. I did watch the joint with Cena. You know, I, I did tolerate that. But something that is more within my realm, you know, it, it had elements of blood sport. Just the way it was all set up. You know, it had elements of blood sport. It had elements of Man of Tai Chi. I liked it. It reminded me, as a matter of fact, you know what that match reminded me of? That match. Oh, God, what was the match from back in the day? Gino, if you're still with me, let me know. What was the match that they did? If it wasn't on SmackDown, it must have been a pay-per-view. There was something, if I'm not mistaken, that maybe had involved either Eddie Guerrero or John Cena. And there was a bunch of cars all around. And there were WWE superstars all around. And, you know, they were cheering on and everything. And, and the two guys were just fighting in the middle of these cars. That's exactly what that fucking match uh, reminded me of. That's exactly what that match had reminded me of. Um, it was just more amped up. It was just more cinematic. And I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, at all. It, it was good. Like I say, you're going to be able to weed out the bullshit. You're going to be able to weed out the people that are just, you know, pro whatever. It's like I said earlier, you know, you're going to act one way. You got to be consistent. You know, you got to be consistent all the way. That's just how you got to be when it's all said and done. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know, who was in it? That's That's my point. It was either on SmackDown or it, or it was a fucking pay-per-view. I, I, it was either John Cena or it was Eddie Guerrero. Or it was something. Yes. Yes, Izzy. Thank you. Eddie Guerrero, John Cena, parking lot brawl. That's what it was. That's exactly what it fucking reminded me of. Exactly. And now that I've said that, I'm sure for you veteran wrestling fans, you probably are like, yes, that's exactly. Yeah, that's what Velveteen Dream and fucking Adam Cole was all about. And let me tell you something. This is how you know true wrestling fans over, oh, you're just shitting on something because this was cool and people liked it and, and you're just trying to use it as an opportunity to bash and try to put over some other promotion because you want dick-sucking tweets and, 
and you know tweet fucked and all that other bullshit that comes your way that you know we know the base that you're playing to but everybody back in the day that had saw the eddie guerrero john cena parking lot brawl match they fucking i remember all of us back we were like man that match was fucked man that man them, them guys was tearing it that shit was we fucking loved it we loved it so what they did tonight was no different than that moment in wrestling history and now that i've said that if you guys have never seen that and you got access to the wwe network or daily motion youtube hop on and go check it out uh my man uh, samuel shaw uh did make a cameo in there because at one point roderick strong uh, Bobby Fish, they did try to jump on Velveteen Dream, uh, but uh, Samuel Shaw, he he actually, it was funny how they did it too because one of the Undisputed Era guys, they tried to grab something from under the ring and they felt a little bit of, uh, of friction, kind of like, well, you know, what the hell is going on here? And uh, it turns out Samuel Shaw was, was fucking under the ring and so he goes and he's beating the shit out of them, makes quick work of them. Puts both of the guys in the back of his fucking trunk. And uh, he fucking drives off. I, that was badass. I, I loved how, you know, now I can't help but wonder, have we seen the last of those two guys? Because WWE is in a really good position right here where they can easily, they can easily, over the course of the next couple of episodes, they can have uh, fucking Samuel Shaw do some torturous shit uh, to those guys. As Adam Cole tries to fight to get both of those guys back. I mean, you could easily slide into into that angle. Because when you think about it, I think it was, if not this recent episode of NXT, maybe it was last week, there was an episode where Samuel Shaw was seen backstage and he was doing some type of uh, uh, a drawing. And whoever was interviewing him was wondering, you know, what was he doing? And he wasn't saying shit. And they came back a couple of segments later and basically... He showed himself, I think he was, I think he drew himself as a sadistic driver that had hostage the Undisputed Era. So how about that? He was almost kind of giving you a premonition, so to speak, if you really kind of stop and think about it. So, yeah, you know, if they decide they want to go in that direction, I mean, they, they got a couple of weeks there where they can film some stuff. Hopefully WWE had thought like that. Uh, and they actually went on ahead and uh, and did that. Otherwise, that would be a huge man. You you guys, how you gonna drop the ball uh, on that one? But no, that was that was pretty good. They did pretty good uh, with that one. I'm trying to get his actual name because I know it's not Samuel Shaw, but that's that's how I remember him. You guys gotta forgive me, uh, Dexter Loomis. I don't know why I keep forgetting. I'll remember it from here on out. Dexter Showtime Loomis. Luminati. So I should be able to remember it uh, from here on out. Closing moments uh, of that matchup, though. Uh, Dream went up to the top, was looking for the Purple Rainmaker uh, onto the chairs, but uh, Cole managed to kick out at two. Dream was talking a hot game, telling him the dream is over uh, to Adam Cole, saying the dream is over for him. Basically, his championship reign is over. When... <laughs> <laughs> low blow to the balls uh cole did to uh velveteen cole then heads up to the top hits the panama sunrise onto the chairs gets the three count retains the title okay so what's next for velveteen dream is the question you know is this a case right here where velveteen dream okay he he cannot go for the championship so long as adam cole remains the champion so what's next? You know, is this a case where, you know, uh, maybe he advocates for somebody else and, and tries to help them dethrone Adam Cole and eventually get into the title picture that way? Or is it a case where maybe Velveteen Dream is going to get the call up to the main roster? You, know, you, you kind of can't help but wonder exactly what the future truly holds uh, for Velveteen Dream, I'm having a hard time picturing him continuing to be in NXT at, at this point. I, I, I really, really am. Because, you know, you got these great 
vibrant, outstanding, bombastic personalities in Matt Riddle and Velveteen Dream that I feel have practically reached their peak down in NXT. And that's great that Matt Riddle has been pulled. He's going to be coming to the main roster very soon. Now you can't help but bring up the question, well, is it maybe time that same thing happens to Velveteen Dream? Do you maybe pull him? You know, and... Uh, you know, and if it's if it is a case where they're gonna pull him, I can easily see Velveteen Dream going to Raw. Have him come out during the ten o'clock hour once the kids are you know essentially put to bed. Let him continue to do his raunchy shit and all that. Enough said. But good, I, I enjoyed that one. Of all the matches on the card tonight, that one I thoroughly enjoyed the most. Uh, I would give that one four out of five stars definitely four out of five stars all right one more match because again we already talked about the nxt women's championship match carrion cross formerly known as killer cross defeating tomaso Ciampa. short of a match short of a match this match according to my notes uh this match did not even make it uh past 10 minutes this was a very, very short match. Um, rightfully so. I mean, look, now when I say that, now here's a case right here where I do not have a problem with the length of the match. All right? Because that would be kind of a disservice to Karrion Cross. You know, it, it gives me such joy to be on this show. And, and see, you know the people that are watching wrestling from other promotions and those that are not. Because you got the guys that are, oh, man, that, you know, and any other time, they never talked about this guy when he was doing his thing in Impact Wrestling and other wrestling promotions, you know, when they had access to it. And I had been, you know, singing of this guy's praises for a couple of years now, for a couple of years now. Uh, I remember even showing him love when that whole legal bullshit was going on with him in impact wrestling and i can kind of remember the tone back then of you know most people not giving a damn because you're like ah well you know this is for a promotion that i i don't even watch and i don't care about and it's like you know if you're not watching this guy that's your fault but this is a guy that's definitely gonna be a a bona fide future megastar you need to be keeping your eyes on him because he's definitely going places him and his woman scarlet bordeaux and so, you know, it gave me uh, great joy to see him in his first takeover uh, in-ring debut match. Uh, gave me great joy. Uh, he hit a fucking home run. I love the way uh, that this was booked. Uh, they basically had him choke out Tommaso Chop. I mean, Tommaso was able to get in a little bit of an offense in there and everything. But once he, everything just pretty much... A modified version of the F5 cross dead as uh, Ciampa was trying to go for the fairy tale ending in closing moments. But you know, he countered it, cross dead into a modified F5, followed it up with the cross jacket, which is his you know, uh, signature move, his finisher, his submission maneuver, made Tommaso Ciampa uh, pass out. I, I loved it. I mean, he, he was booked like a fucking beast. And, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, there's a really cool tweet that I put out there uh, with regards to Karrion Cross, And um, I basically had said, uh, in a nutshell, you know, the way that he's being booked so far, he reminds me of one of my all-time favorite comic book story arcs in history, uh, which was the shit on Doomsday. And I uh, had put the question out there, who can stop Doomsday? You know, because that's exactly what he is. When you think about his entrance and all that, the end is here and all that other shit. Like, you know, you know who's going to be able to stop this fucking dude? Um, you know, if you really enjoy it, I, I cannot stress this enough. If you never paid attention to my show in previous years, if you uh, were never honestly a fan of Karrion Cross when he was Killer Cross, you know, if tonight was your first time really watching this guy, and you really liked what you had saw. That's good. I would definitely encourage you guys to go check out on YouTube, Daily Motion. Go see the other promotions. You can see a big bulk of his stuff from Impact. But go check out his stuff online. 
and really, really whet your appetites even more. And you'll really, really be able to grasp why me and you know few others have been singing nothing but high praises uh, for this guy. Matter of fact, I remember one of our uh, year-end awards, um, as far as breakout star, he he actually won from this show. He he won in that category. And he, you know, future is very bright. Future is very bright for that young man. And uh, yeah, I I can't say anything but good things but good things for him and uh him and him and Tommaso Chapa good chemistry together damn damn good chemistry together can't wait to see what happens next for this guy cannot wait to see what happens for this guy next all right so man we went through all the matches uh that match by the way for carrying across I mean look you know it's kind of hard to rate that one because it was kind of but just a little bit that I saw there I I would say, I'll say two out of five. I'm only giving it a two out of five because it was such a short match. I think if they would have went up to 10, I'd be at a three. But, you know, I, I got to stick to that. I got to stick to that. Can't I can't go any higher than that. To go any higher, for me, that would kind of feel like a disservice. But... Matches of the night, definitely I'll, I'll give the nod to the Last Chance Backlot Brawl. That was pretty damn good. I'm also going to give the nod to the Triple Threat Match. And I'm also going to give the nod to Keith Lee taking on... Actually, no. I'm going to give the nod to Finn Balor taking on Damian Priest. Those are the three that I'm eyeballing. Scale of 1 to 10 again, I would give this pay-per-view a... Uh, a uh, a seven, I would give it a seven out of ten. Could Cross be the one to take the belt off of Adam Cole? Is he very well? He very well could be. But see, here's the thing: I don't know if WWE would be so quick as to want to shoot Kerry and Cross up that fucking fast. I don't know if they really would would want to do something like that. Could you eventually build up to something like that in due time? Yeah, I mean, if that's ultimately the blueprint that the powers that be in, in NXT, Triple H, and them, if that's what they're thinking for maybe four to five months down the road, then yeah, you, you can easily, I think that would be a really cool ass transition. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you, you can't also, you can't also just kind of looking at the current landscape right now, the current landscape right now, you got Cross, you still got to put Finn Balor in there, you still got to put him in the argument there. Uh, see who else? Who else can you put in there? You can even put Dexter Loomis in there as well. You, you, I mean, he's he's got a great fucking look, and I don't think it's just for the hell of it that he's been injected into this whole storyline. I could easily see him slide into an opportunity to take on Cole as well. So. You know, not saying he can become a champion, but, you know, if you were just thinking about future opponents for Adam Cole, that's just some of the things uh, that you can look at as well. Uh, but there's a lot that I, there's a lot of questions that came out of NXT, which they did a good job, as always, with these takeovers. They do a really good job in coming out. All right. We're setting up the next batch of programming. Definitely going into the next handful of weeks of programming it's going to be pretty damn solid definitely pretty damn solid all right before we get too long-winded one more time let's go look at the polls here let's see what you guys had to say once again go on youtube.com forward slash drcwr show click on the communities tab and sound off on what you thought about tonight's takeover event we also got the same poll on twitter i'm looking at the poll on youtube right now Early voting coming in we got 100 percent of you guys that are giving takeover in your house a thumbs up, 100% of you are giving it a thumbs up. Meanwhile, over on Twitter, I'm seeing we've got 6.7% of you giving it a thumbs down. Meanwhile, 93.3% of you are giving it a thumbs up. Appreciate everybody that had casted their vote. All right, so some quick programming notes. I am on a much-needed break. I'm taking Monday off. 
I usually like to take one day off uh, during uh, the week each month. So this go around, I'm going to make it be this Monday, uh, June the 8th. So taking Monday off, but I will be back live with you guys. I actually got my uh, new work schedule for the week and the way my work schedule is looking right now let me just pull it up one more time the way my work schedule is looking right now i'm gonna say i will be live with you guys again uh if not wednesday june the 10th i will be live with you all for sure thursday june the 11th as long as you're following me on social media, you guys will definitely know for sure uh, when we're going to be uh, doing the show. But no show this Monday. So enjoy the, uh, you know, especially if you're new, enjoy the stuff that we got on demand and on the downloads. That'll tie you guys over until we get ready to come back live on the air. Um, got a dentist appointment tomorrow. I am so excited. Um, I get to uh, get my cleaning it's time for my cleaning i also got to get a rescan for my uh, invisalign's we got to get some refinement trays uh so it can overcorrect just a couple of things so i'm looking forward to that i'll be sitting down tomorrow recording some stuff for you patreon members by the way patreon.com forward slash rcwr show five dollars a month check out bonus audio and video content great majority of which you won't be able to find anywhere else shout out to patreon members gino gino shout out to my man, Justin Ripstock. I had to do that long dramatic pause. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Justin Ripstock. Shout out to Sean Kenter. Shout out to Michael Wolf. Shout out to John Davis. Also, special shout out to Tony Bean Gaming. One of the very latest in all things Marvel Strike Force, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Marvel Super War. Tony Bing Gaming. Tips, tricks, news, walkthroughs, reviews. Check him out on YouTube. He also has a Patreon paywall as well, appreciate all of you guys. Remember, you enjoyed this episode, especially those of you checking it out on YouTube. Uh, hit the like button. It's free. Let's the YouTube algorithm gods know you enjoyed this so they can recommend it to other people. And, uh, you know, subscribe, all that good jazz. Appreciate everybody that joined us live tonight. If you're going to be waiting for the audio version of this, give me about uh, 30 minutes uh, maybe 35 minutes, and I will have this ready to go. Knock on wood, we had no technical issues tonight. I love that. I think our problems might have been resolved, but keep the fingers crossed. I'm still going to be uh, going to the uh, other platform that we had discussed on the last show. But that's going to do it, everybody. Much love. Until next go-round, I'm wishing all of you all to be safe and, most importantly, be kind to one another. I will see you all next go-round. Adios.